tenets and you're saying, okay, you know, in each area, as we get older, these things happen. And so we are going to look for ways to reverse or to slow down some of these things, right? Um, and then you, you came up with like this numbering system. So can you talk about the numbering system, you know, and how it works? Sure. So as I was going through all of these really depressing reasons about why your cells age, they would use examples of things that could reverse it, right? They would say, for example, aminoguanine, like, oh, this is amazing. It reverses some glycation. And you'd be like, ooh, what's that? So then you would look it up. And then I would, you know, go on. Well, one of the benefits that I have of being in the hospital, if I have access to probably every paper, every written in the course of humanity, right? At, at my fingertips, which is fantastic. So I would put into this giant search engine, amino guanine and telomeres going back, you know, a million years. And if there were articles written on this, fantastic. I would read them, right? Dissect the information. And if there weren't, there weren't. Either no one's looked at it or there's no effect. But I went through this with every substance. Whereas veritrol, nicotinamide, curcumin, this, that, all of these little tiny molecules everywhere, Croft referenced a million times. And I just stumbled upon this huge pile of information. And so what I realized that sometimes an, a, a substance had been tested like in a cell only, right? In, in culture, right? Put agent X in with a liver cell, what happens? Right. Some of these things have gotten as far as, oh, we gave it to a rodent or we gave it to a baboon. And in other things, they're like, oh, we gave it to a human. Right. So I realized that some things worked in theory, some things worked in culture, some things gave up along the way or some things we hadn't really looked at. So I decided that if it didn't work at all or no one had looked at it, it got a zero in that category. Right. If if something had been in a culture and it seemed to be really effective, I, I gave it a one. If it worked in a rodent model, I gave it a two. And if it worked in humans, I gave it a three, right? Yeah. So that's a thought. So zero means either it doesn't work or it's never been tested. Could that be. is correct. That is absolutely correct. And lots of things haven't been tested. There are a lot of molecules out there that may be super amazing and no one's looked at them yet. And, and I know this to be true because like, for example, there's the, the delphinidin. One of my favorite molecules come from the Mackay berry. It's sort of this esoteric berry on the, the hills of Argentina. And the more we look at it, the more amazing things we discover about it. But if you don't look, you don't see it. So there aren't that many human models because no one's tried, but the rat models are outstanding. So it's conservatively rated until someone keeps going. Like I can't, hypo I can't make up science. Yep. I can only report to what's been done, right? Yep. But there are like amazing molecules out there. For example, spermidine, fantastic molecule, right? And it turns out it's a long polyamine. It's positively charged. It's a long chain. And it loves to fit itself into the grooves of negatively charged DNA. And it kind of works like bubble wrap. It's amazing. It just gets in there and it protects the DNA, Right. And it's supposed to like in a test tube, it protects it from all sorts of insults, uh, radiation, you know, heat, uh, glycation, all that kind of stuff. I have no idea if that works in real life. Right. But it's an amazing idea. So in that particular category, I gave it a one because it should be amazing in a test tube. It's amazing. But we have no human evidence that it actually protects your DNA. Right. I didn't so I didn't think I saw spermidine on your site. Have you? So no, I have, so the site has not been recently updated. I just finished book two. Um, it is sitting at the editor and um, uh, <laughs> uh, my illustrator. That's what they're doing. And so hopefully I, you know, they keep telling me a few more weeks, a few more weeks, hopefully by Christmas book two will be out. And I have 29 molecules in there that are just amazing. And it took me two and a half years to do all of this research. Um, but I've got more molecules on the horizon. And that's one of my absolute new favorites. Excellent. So can we talk about the book a little bit? So is yeah. it like a um, an update to the previous or it's a, an extension? Should, should you read the first one first and then this one? Oh, yeah. So yeah. right. So the first one, I, 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 if you've read it, the first half of the book is really depressing because it's, it's, all of the reasons that your cells fall apart in, in brutal, ugly detail. 
And then the second half is 15 or 14, depending on how you count them, agents to start reversing the process. And as soon as I sort of got that book aside, all of these other molecules started popping up. So I started keeping track of them. And I finally broke down and said, okay, this has to be a book. But while I was doing this, more science pops up as well. So for example, I've introduced a new concept that I learned about. I'm sure some other people may not have, maybe they already know, I don't know. There's something called the mitochondrial permeability transition pore, right? So it's this pore in your mitochondria that when, the, when it's under stress, it just flickers and opens and it just lets off a little bit of the gradient so that the mitochondria is more stable. But the older you are and the worse off your mitochondria are, it stays open longer. And the problem with that, of course, is you, learn, you lose ele electrochemical potential and your mitochondria sort of don't do very well. And then after you leave it open long enough, the entire mitochondria self-destructs. So we need to keep our mitochondrial transition pores either closed or flickering at a healthy, healthy rate. And it turns out that there are three or four agents that do this. So the new book is going to have topics like that. Um, or updates to other ones as you move along. But the whole thing sort of premises the idea that you've read book one, because it's kind of long and boring. And I didn't want to have to pe make people suffer through all of that all over again. Okay. And, and I probably am not a good advertising agent for my own book there, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, but it, no, it sounds very interesting. Uh, because you, you kind of need to understand that background. I, th I think you do. 